Good evening. The observatory raised the first black rainstorm warning for the first time in almost a year tonight after torrential downpours lashed Hong Kong. Sightings of hail were reported all across town and caused severe damage at the Kowloon Tong Mall, where shoppers had to run for safety after the glass roof smashed. While we are often told to stay indoors during thunderstorms for our own safety, that rule didn't apply at Festival Walk Shopping Centre in Kowloon Tong tonight which was waterlogged after hail smashed the glass ceiling. Soon after the roof gave away, widespread flooding was seen around the mall, and even shops could not be spared. Shop shoppers wandered through puddles in bare feet. Diners even had to abandon their meals and run for safety. The observatory raised the amber rainstorm warning at 7.45 p.m., following downpours across Hong Kong. That was upgraded to red half an hour later, before it was replaced by the most severe black signal at 8.40 p.m. Amateur footage shot on mobile phones showed how treacherous the conditions were out on the streets. Sightings of hail were also reported in Tun Moon, Wong Tai Sin, Kwai Chung and Chin Wan. The downpours also caused widespread flooding in multiple districts. The wet weather conditions are expected to continue for the next few days. Billionaire tycoon Thomas Kwok says he doesn't think property prices will fluctuate much in the near future. The Sun Hong Kai boss also says he needs to watch Chief Executive Leung Chen a bit longer before he decides whether to support his re-election in 2017. Emily Liu reports. One of Hong Kong's wealthiest property tycoons, Thomas Kwok, came out this afternoon to make his predictions about the city's property market. The San Hong Kai Properties Joint Chairman said although property prices will fluctuate in certain areas, the changes won't be drastic. The billionaire pointed his fingers at rising construction costs, which he says have gone up 60 to 70 percent over the past five years. Kwok stressed that the rising cost of construction materials and land are not the main reasons for the increase, but the huge shortage of builders. He said developers can't find enough workers on time to complete their projects, so construction often had to be delayed, increasing overall costs drastically. When asked if the Labor Department's recent decision to speed up the vetting process for foreign laborers will help lower costs, Kwok said it will, but not by much. Meanwhile, some analysts say the two rounds of property cooling measures combined with quantitative easing in the U.S. will make property prices go down. Uh, if you look at the market, the trend is coming down. Uh, the primary market basically will come down about like a 10 to 15 percent. Kwan said the drop will be more noticeable in the new territories. Uh, Taiwan, uh, Zhang Guanou, maybe Tumun. Uh, because of the land supplies, because of the, uh, there will be more new flats available this year. On another issue, the San Hong Kei boss was also asked if he will back Chief Executive Leung Chen Ying if he decides to run for a second term in 2017. Two months ago, Kwok praised Leung for doing a great job in his second policy address. But today, he said he will have to observe him for a couple more years before deciding whether to support him. The billionaire tycoon was also asked about his bribery charges. Kwok, his brother Raymond and former Chief Secretary Raphael Hoi faced multiple charges of corruption and conspiracy to commit misconduct in a public office. I'm confident about the trial, but I don't dare to say I will win, said Kwok. The trial begins on the 8th of May. Construction is to begin soon on a site in Ta Kuling, where chickens can be kept in case of an outbreak of the bird flu virus. But locals don't like the idea and accuse the government of bulldozing through the plans without a proper consultation. Bolan reports. Around 30 residents of Taku Ling are up in arms over government plans to build a facility near their homes to store local chickens if any imported mainland birds test positive for the H7N9 avian flu. The government insists the site will only be used if the Zhengshawan market has to close due to an outbreak. But the villagers complain that there hasn't been any communication between them and the administration over the construction plans. The protest 
investors want to know whether the proper procedures were followed when considering the site. But Health Secretary Ko Wing-man insisted today that the site would be used in emergencies. He added that steps have been taken to minimize the impact on residents. As summer approaches, the health chief said an outbreak of bird flu would be minimal compared to one in the winter during the peak flu season. However, he said the government is already looking ahead to next winter and planning special measures in case Hong Kong is threatened by the deadly virus. The health chief said the contingency measures will be discussed at a meeting in May, including research on a vaccine for poultry. Meanwhile, Ko said the government is considering testing a vaccine to treat the human strain of the H7N9 bird flu virus. According to our experts, um, I think the um, uh, in the mainland, the, um, the experts have already obtained uh, the license for uh, experiments. And the earliest possible available uh, time frame would be around end of the year or early next year. However, uh, the, as to the application of this um, uh, newly available vaccine, uh, it remains to be discussed amongst the uh, scientists and the authorities. So far, there have been seven confirmed cases of H7N9 in Hong Kong and 393 on the mainland. Boleung, ATV News. Dozens of Occupy Central protesters held their first non-violence practice demonstration outside the government's headquarters at Tamar today. Participants of the movement acted out scenarios which they believe they may encounter during the real, real thing when they take over the city's financial hub in July. While some of them pretended to be police officers and used truncheons to disperse the crowds, the demonstrators were told not to retaliate. Movement organizer Benny Tai said that it's important that volunteers are trained to understand good discipline and remain peaceful during the protest. Lechko President Zhang Yuxing has urged the pan-democrats to head to Shanghai next month to make the most of a meeting with senior officials on political reform. Zhang also dismissed reports last week, which quoted him as saying that Beijing is willing to accept a chief executive candidate who isn't seen as overly patriotic. Here's Emily Xiu. There are less than two weeks to go before the ice-breaking trip to Shanghai, where lawmakers will meet senior mainland officials to discuss political reform. Okay. But some pan-democrats say they'll boycott the trip because they don't think it will amount to anything. Head of the delegation and LegCo President Zhang Yuxing urged the undecided pan-democrats to grasp this rare chance to speak to senior officials face-to-face -face during the two-day visit. But many of the pan-democrats are demanding special treatment, an exclusive meeting with officials that their pro-establishment colleagues are not allowed to attend. Beijing has already done a lot to cater to the concerns of the pan-democratic camp, said Zhang. They've arranged half a day for talks on political reform, which is more than enough time for both sides to meet. He stressed that the central government hasn't ruled out an exclusive meeting. He insisted that it's normal not to reveal the final details of the itinerary weeks before the trip. There's no point setting everything in stone beforehand, said Zhang. I don't see why the pan-democrats can't ask pro-establishment legislators to leave the room halfway through the meeting so they can talk to the officials alone. Zhang said he expects pan-democrats to make up their minds by next Wednesday to Thursday. The LegCo president also rejected earlier reports quoting him as saying that a mainland official told him Beijing is willing to accept chief executive candidates that don't love China, love Hong Kong. He said he had been misquoted and misinterpreted. I did say the official told me it would be a high price to pay if Beijing screens out a popular candidate that is considered non-patriotic by the nomination committee. But I did not mean Beijing is willing to accept a non-patriotic chief executive candidate as long as he or she is popular, clarified Zhang. This statement clearly contradicts the central government's stance. Zhang said he wouldn't say such a thing because he had not lost his mind. Police arrested a taxi driver in Yaomate overnight, suspected of overcharging his customers. Plainclothes officers were in central, on the lookout for drivers involved in illegal activities. Police say the driver charged almost double the original fare when taking undercover officers from Wynnum Street to Pak Ho Street in Yaomate. The officers revealed their identities and accused the man of overcharging, soliciting and not using the meter. 
Hundreds of thousands of people crowded the streets of downtown Taipei today in a massive sit-in to protest against a trade deal between Taiwan and the mainland. And about 1,000 people, mostly students, rallied in Hong Kong to support their Taiwanese counterparts. Britain Clinic reports. What started as a small student protest against a controversial trade pact has developed into a fully-fledged anti-government movement which has paralyzed downtown Taipei. Hundreds of thousands of people who are fed up with the government occupied Katagalan Boulevard outside the presidential palace this afternoon. Dressed in black and carrying sunflowers, the symbol of the movement, they denounced what they call a black box agreement that would boost cross-strait economic ties. Protect democracy, withdraw the trade pact, chanted the student leaders on stage. The protest movement began nearly two weeks ago when students took over parliament and barricaded themselves in. They're still there despite efforts by President Ma ying Zhou to reason with them. While organizers had asked the crowd to show restraint, authorities took no chances. There was a heavy police presence outside the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, just a stone's throw away from the protest zone. Police warned the crowd that anyone still there at 2 a.m. tomorrow morning will be removed by force. While the latest trade deal would open up lucrative business opportunities for Taiwanese companies, some fear they will surrender their economic independence and be more susceptible to political pressure from Beijing. Ma had agreed to enact a law that would subject the trade pact to further scrutiny, but it didn't satisfy the students, who have vowed to continue their protest until Ma withdraws the deal, which she signed last July. Here in Hong Kong, student unions from the city's seven universities hold rallies in a show of support for their Taiwanese counterparts. The march from Causeway Bay to Chater Garden in Central was peaceful. Police sealed off one westbound lane of Queensway at one stage. Debris has been recovered from the Indian Ocean, where international teams are searching for the missing Malaysia Airlines plane that disappeared three weeks ago. At the same time, relatives of the Chinese passengers arrived in Malaysia to demand proof the plane crashed from government officials. Arthur Urquiola reports. Families of the more than 150 Chinese passengers on the missing Malaysia Airlines plane that disappeared just over three weeks ago arrived in Kuala Lumpur today. They want to meet Malaysian officials and press them for more information on how they came to the conclusion that the plane crashed into the Indian Ocean. The relatives are demanding proof and are accusing the Malaysian government of delays and deception. Australian Prime Minister Tony Abbott confirmed today that some objects have been recovered from the search area in the Indian Ocean. We had quite a few ships out there in the search zone and uh, two vessels, a Chinese vessel and HMAS Success, uh, did recover objects from the ocean. Uh, we haven't yet been able to ascertain what those objects are, but nevertheless, for the first time yesterday, objects have been recovered from the ocean. The Royal New Zealand Air Force, which is among those taking part in the search, also reported seeing objects. But whereas recent searches have been hampered by rough weather, the improved conditions have brought new problems with them. You get to see everything. So all the fishing boys, we get to see all the sea mammals, the dolphins, the whales. And that means that you're using valuable time uh, looking for those. So very quickly we had to sort of get into a bit of discipline and just start uh, looking at those and determine that they're not of interest. Meanwhile, more search planes are scouring the search area 2,500 kilometers from Perth. It's here where planes and satellites have spotted possible debris from the plane. Also leaving today to join the search was an Australian Navy ship fitted with a sophisticated black box locator from the U.S., as well as an unmanned water drone. Once we do get a detection with the tow pinger locator, we would then deploy the Artemis, this underwater vehicle here. It's an autonomous, it's basically a robot uh, that can be programmed to go take a uh, sonar uh, mapping of the debris field. The batteries inside a black box flight recorder allow it to transmit a signal for 30 days following a crash. It will still take days for the vessel to reach the search zone. Even if the debris in the middle of the Indian Ocean is confirmed to be wreckage from the plane, there are still questions as to how and why it veered so far off course. Arthur Akiola, ATV News. 
North Korea has threatened to carry out a nuclear test following condemnation from the United Nations over a recent missile exercise. And campaigning has begun in Ukraine for next month's general elections for presidential candidates. Here's Arthur Erkola.